Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Wafa Safwani binti Azul Kifli and my partner is Siti Nurkartika Ernasari binti Kifli. We will be discussing about the types of Islamic contracts in the Islamic banking today. From our research, we have found that there are six types of Islamic contracts in the Islamic banking, which are the charitable contract, the security contract, the supporting contract, exchange-based contract, partnership contract, and lastly, the agency contract. With this, I will be, I, Wafa, will be explaining more in depth about the three out of the six contracts, which are charitable contracts, security contracts, and supporting contracts. Meanwhile, Erna, she will be explaining the other three of the six contracts. Moving on to the first contract, which is charitable contract. I will take Wadiya as an example for a charitable contract. Wadiya is an Islamic investment system that allows individuals to secure their assets or fortunes. It existed before Islam and has evolved throughout Islamic history. Before Islamic banking, only reliable individuals manage others' wealth. An example of Wadi'a during the Prophet's time was when the Prophet ﷺ managed the people of Makkah's wealth. And Wadi'a comes from an Arabic verb, Wadi'a, which means living something into someone else's care. There are two types of Wadi'a. The first Wadi'a is Wadi'a Yad al Amana. Wadi'a Yad al Amana is where the Wadi'a is based on custodianship where it requires deposit protection and return upon request. The depositor is responsible for the delivery cost, meanwhile the owner gets any benefits derived from the deposit with the gain corresponding to the deposit. The second type of wadia is wadia yad al damana. Wadia yad al damana is a combination of safeguarding and guarantee contract while the custodian gets to use the deposit without the permission of the depositor and the custodian will be responsible the restoration of the deposit pillars are quite important in wadia there are three pillars in wadia which are offer and acceptance that's one contracting parties that's number two and the third pillar is, is assets in the modern day islamic banking it refers wadia refers to an agreement between the depositor which is the cast the customer and the between the depositor the customer and the custodian which is the bank and it refers to the protection of the assets on the client's behalf and it is typically used in current and savings account. Next is the security contract. And in security contract, I will be giving out kafala as an example. Kafala is an ancient Islamic transactions which addresses financial gaps that are caused by mistrust and uncertainty. It involves joining oneself to another and assuming joint responsibility for fulfilling an obligation. It has evolved over time and is now incorporated into Islamic legal structure for modern transactions. Moving on to the types of kafala. There are two types of kafala. The first kafala is kafala bi al-nafs. Kafala bi al-nafs is a physical guarantee also known as Damit al Waj, where the guarantor pledges to deliver the guaranteed individual and is held responsibility or is held responsible for delivering the accused in court. And Shafi'is accept this as a human rights punishment and assets. Moving on to the second type of kafala, which is kafala bi al mal. Kafala bi al mal is a contract between a debtor and a guarantor where the Data agrees to pay fines and personal obligations and merging their responsibility. Meanwhile, the guarantor sets the order of liabilities and focuses on the principal data. Meanwhile, the modern-day Islamic banking use 
of Kampala, they serve as a guarantor, releasing buyers from liabilities in case of default or contract violation. However, it cannot guarantee the financial commitments without the shareholder and investor consent. Moving on to the third contract, which is supporting contract. In supporting contract, I'll be giving out Mukasa as an example. Mukasa is a Sharia practice that allows debt resolution between two parties and it involves the set of equal debt or different debts, promoting personal responsibilities and discouraging repeat payments. Mukasa also involves and the discharge of receivable debts against payable debts. It also categorized it as voluntary set-off and required set-off. Moving on to the types of Mukasa. There are three types of Mukasa. The first one is Mukasa al qanuniya Mukasa al qanuniya is a court process that allows debt settlement without consent or agreement. Um, where the debt is similar and is in interest of both parties. The second one is Mukasa al Dalabiya. Mukasa al Dalabiya is when a superior creditor seeks for a larger debt or quality, or unless it is um, judged as unreasonable, the less preferred party must consent. The third one, or the last one, is a Mukasa al Tafaqiya. Mukasa litifaqiyah is a legal principle that occurs when the debt are discharged with mutual agreement, particularly when the subject matter does not meet the requirement of Mukasa al qanuniyah Those are the types of Mukasa. In the modern day of Islamic banking, Mukasa is a tool that is used to settle debts between customers and banks. Paper trade and value settlement are facilitated by clearing houses while exchange internal exchange arrangements are managed by central bank okay so that is all from me wafa next i'll be passing the floor to erna to explain more about the other three contracts which are exchange based contract partnership contract and agency contract so the next contract is exchange-based contract. One of the contract is ijara. So ijara is an Arabic term that means lease, rent, or hire. Technically, ijara is a contract where it involves the transfer of a desirable and legally permissible right to use property or service in exchange for non compensation Ijara it can also either entail the transfer of ownership of permitted usage for a specific period or service in exchange for compensation. So it is important to note that perishable items such as fruit, food, or money, it cannot be leased as they are considered to have limited durability. Only items capable of providing a continuous flow of usage can be subject to leasing agreement. Two types of ijara. There are two types of ijara. Number one is ijara al-mal or hiring a person. It is a contract of arrangement where one party employs another individual for a specific wage. The higher individual known as ajir, it provides their service in exchange for compensation with the employer terms as the al-mustajir. This type of agreement it encompasses various professions such as doctor, lawyer, or teacher, where valuable services are exchanged for payment. Number two is ijara al yan, or lease of an asset. It involves one party leasing their asset to another in exchange for rent. For example, someone may rent out their car to another individual, and it receives rent in return for the use of the car. In this agreement, ownership of the asset remain, remains with the lesser while the lease enjoys the benefit and the usage of the asset for the specific period. So the last one is the termination of ijara. Number one is all the goods that were rent are damaged or destroyed. So it will terminate the ijara contract. So number two is 
if one of the party want to cancel the rent. The last one is the end of the rental period. So it this will terminate the HRA contract. So the next one is partnership contract. The contract is Musharaka. So literally the words Musharaka means sharing and participation. Technically, Musharaka is where the partner of two or more person combines their either capital or labor together to share the profit and losses, enjoying similar rights and liabilities. So there are four basic principle of Musharaka. Number one is Musharaka financing is about actively participating in a business, not just lending the money. Number two, investor must share both profit and losses based on their contribution. Number three, partner can decide how to divide profit, even if it is different from their investment ratio. But if a partner does not help manage their business, they cannot claim more profit than their, in, than their investment ratio. Number four, losses should be shared based on each partner's investment. So the types of musharaka, there are four types. Number one is syarikatul mufawadah which means equal partnership. In this partnership, all partners contribute equally to both capital and management. So the profit and losses are also shared equally among the business partner. All partners must be Muslim and each partner responsible for each other's action. So number two is Sharikatul Inan, which is multiple parties partnership. So the partners share capital and profit but they do not have to contribute equally or manage the business together. They can have different roles and responsibilities. Partners are not responsible for each other's action, and each partner's personally liability toward third party is separated. So number three is Sharikatul Abdan, which is professional partnership. These types of partnership involve uh, professionals like tailors or lawyers working together and sharing their earnings. They do not put in money, just their skills. The, the money they earn from customer is divided among them based on the agreed ratio. Some scholars do not like these types because it's hard to measure is each person's contribution. They also say there is no initial money put in and the partnership relies on future earnings. But others, scholar thinks it is okay because the goal is to make profit which is possible. So the last one is Sharikatu Wuju, which is partnership upon credit. In this partnership, individuals agree to buy goods jointly using personal credit and later sell them for cash. No initial capital is contributed. Profit is typically shared equally or based on each other's part, each partner's ownership, share of the goods purchased. Losses are distributed similarly. Partner can decide on the profit distribution method among themselves. So the next contract is agency contract. The contract is wakala. So wakala literally meaning protection, delegation, preservation, or authorization. Technically, it is a contract where one person allows another to do a specific task on their behalf. The person giving authorization is called principal, and the one who acting on their behalf is the agent. So the agent may receive a commission for their service, usually based on common practice. The main feature of agency are service provision, representation, and legal impact. So, service provision is the agent does a job or provide a service for the principal. Representation is the agent acts on behalf of the principal. And the last one, legal impact, is the agent can make decisions that affect the principal's legal rights and responsibilities. So, Wakala simplifies tasks by allow, allowing individuals to delegate responsibilities to, other, to others when they are unable to perform them personally, making it a practical and efficient way to ma manage various aspects of life. 
So condition of wakala, number one is the person giving authority must be able to manage the property and legally allowed to appoint someone else to act for them. Number two, the person acting on behalf must also be legally allowed to do so. Number three, the task the agent is allowed to must be allowed lawful. They cannot appoint an agent to do something illegally like stealing or something that uh, illegal. So number four, the task the agent is allowed to do must be clear to avoid confusion or karar. Number five, the task must be something that can be represented by someone else. It cannot appoint an agent to do a personal act like praying or appoint to take ownership of something that belongs to everyone, like fruit from public trees. So the next one is the termination of wakala. So number one is when the reason or task for which the agency was created no longer exists. Number two, if the principal personally completes the task, they assign to an agent. Number three, if either the principal or the agent is disqualified. Number four, if the agent decides to quit. Number five, if the purpose of the agency is destroyed. Number six, when the principal choose to end the agent service. Types of wakala, there are four types of wakala. Number one is particular agency. Particular agency is when someone is appointed for a known task or transaction, like buying or selling a specific house or car. The agent is responsible for handling only that particular transaction. Number two is general agency. In a general agency, the principal give the agent broad authority. For example, uh, a principal might ask the agent to buy a house that they find suitable. So here, the agent has all the power the principal has. Similarly, a company's director act as a general agent with wide authority to make decisions for the company. So number three is restricted agency. A restricted agency must follow specific limitation or condition. So for example, the principal might instruct the agent to buy a house at a certain price. So within a, a time frame or, to, or through installment, the agent must adhere strictly to this condition. If they do not, the agent complete the transaction for themselves and it does not bind the principal. So the last one is unrestricted agency. Unrestricted agency is when the principal does not set any specific condition for the transaction. For instance, uh, if the principal tells an agent the, to buy a house without mentioning the price or payment method. However, the agent still need to follow common practice and custom. According to Imam Abu Hanifa, the, an agent isn't obligated by local custom because they vary from one place to another. But according to his followers and majority of fake school, the agent must adhere to the custom among the people. If the agent goes against the customary practice, the transaction might need the principal's approval to be valid. So to conclude everything, we have provided in-depth insights about the categories of Islamic contracts and or types of Islamic contracts in the Islamic banking today. As we all know now, there are six categories or six types of Islamic contracts in the Islamic banking today, which are charitable contract, security contract, supporting contract, exchange-based contract, partnership contract, and agency contract. All of these contracts cater different ways of function into the modern day of Islamic banking. And to highlight the fact that all of these are Sharia compliant. Using Sharia compliant Islamic banking is important. By this, we are raising awareness the importance of that. Thank you for listening to us and thank you for giving your attention to us. That's all. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.